Greetings, this is September 5th at 10.30 p.m. and I have good news for the area that we're overlooking in this photo from the chasm. We have a new notice from the TNRD and the areas indicated in white. The alert has changed from evacuation order to evacuation alert. That's very good news. That extends from Cache Creek Hills all the way up to the chasm. If we look at the webcam provided by Beto Tree, and the link is below, this is just before sunset. I can see a lot of fog, a lot of haze in the atmosphere on the horizon. Very difficult to see if there's smoke activity. If we shift to the NRC infrared and their time delineated display here, I'd like to look at the area southeast of Green Lake. Uh, they've been doing a lot of work, and I've seen reports of backburning in the area towards uh, Tin Cup Lake, and some of those hot spots appear strategic. The closest one appears two and a half kilometers southeast of the park, and there's another one that's uh, about three kilometers down Pritatok Road southwest or south of the park. And that one appears about 500 meters east of the road. Now, viewer Deb has kindly posted a link to the United Firefighters Society in the comments. And one of the photographs on their front page is this area with a backburn indicated. So you might want to go to that site and get more detailed information. I see they're applying measurements and you can get... Uh, more qualified information on screens that they're posting on their page. And I'm noticing more infrared being used in reference resources from various agencies and in media. Also, viewer Paul sent me this image of the VIRS data that he was able to collect. And as he said, it's also very slow uh, loading up this information. Each one of those dots has a string of data attached. However, we can zoom in and look at the area to the south of Green Lake and see where this controlled burn is happening. It's turning into orange 12-hour hotspots and appears to be aging in place on that satellite system. If we jump to the NRC M3 data, that's on the NRC interactive map, and that's linked below, we can see that it correlates somewhat with the Google Earth KML, but I am seeing a few more red hot spots that are further to the northwest. They appear as outliers within a kilometer of the main fire body. I've also gone to the Lance near real-time data imagery. This is available through NASA for the VIIR system. And this is what it's displaying. I'm not a big fan of the little fire icons. I'd rather see a clinical dot. Um, however, when you zoom in, and I'll put the link below, you can see on the Google KML a very good representation of where fire activity may be where heat is being picked up by the infrared. So while this is loaded, let's take a quick look at the imagery around Pressy Lake and the ray field. This is that group of fire that may be part of a 500 meter wide swath that BC Wildfire is strategically planning to wrap around the area. And there'll be a link to an article in the description below. Uh, they call it a black line, a fire guard, and this may be part of this program. Uh, it was discussed a few videos back how these fire pockets seem to be grouping together. Uh, we can see what may be that line going up the ray field and forming pockets towards the south of Sheridan. So this would be a control strategy in this area that they're well aware of. And I've read articles, you may not see them on the road, you may not see them in the bush. They're concentrating on protecting properties and sensitive critical areas.
Let's move southwards to Young Lake and this may not be a representation of what's actually occurring. It could be smoldering and long-term heat. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean there's a raging fire when you see these icons. Looking further south, we see Hyheum Loon Lake and over towards Chartrand. I'm watching that movement towards the lake. There are forested sections in there very dense bush and if we look northwards up along brigade between the road and the pipeline those hot spots appear to be breaking up into smaller groups i am seeing a reduction in the amount of infrared being displayed there but it's very difficult to compare mapping systems however we're getting an indication of the general area where there is still volatility there still is heat being displayed and these infrared might be off 350 meters uh, 750 meters from their original intended position let's zoom closer into chartrand lake and we're seeing that creep towards that forested area now this image on google earth may not be representative of the current forest state there is that August 22nd historical image from the Landsat photo, and that gives a more accurate depiction of what forest and vegetation is on the ground. And before we leave this infrared suite uh, provided by NASA, I would like you to please look about 10 miles, uh, excuse me, 15 kilometers to the west of 93 Mile House. There is a hot spot being indicated there. And when this update is over, I'm going to go see if I can get that verified. Let's move over to Windy now, and we can see the airflow. It's fairly calm over at Little Fort, but then it comes up onto the plateau, picks up speed, and it's heading towards Williams Lake. So anywhere northwest of this fire perimeter may be experiencing a lot of smoke and haze. If we look at the forecast, it looks like it'll stay around nine kilometers an hour from the southeast all night long until tomorrow morning and then it it actually starts to slow down through the afternoon however tomorrow afternoon looks to be very hot uh, not a lot of airflow and still consistently coming from the southeast until on thursday it flips around this should be quite slow at first and then build up to midnight Friday where we may have 18 kilometers an hour gusts up around 45 potentially higher I know that sounds ominous but it may actually benefit crews pushing fire back onto itself so in another update I'd like to look at areas that are potentially south of fire flanks and maybe we can take a look at the radiative scans and just see where the intensity is on these fire flanks. And of course, we've been looking at an image of the Dry BC Begbie Cam. A little bit of haze I see in front of the spotlight. Uh, there could be smoke in the air there. I know there's a lot of smoldering going on. It's difficult to get a worldview satellite imagery right now. Uh, I'll keep checking back and when I have new information, I'll post it. Thank you very much for uh, keeping me up to date with your comments and notices. I'll keep passing the information along through updates and please do check out the official sites in the links below. Stay alert and if you're northwest of these fire flanks, please be extra cautious monitoring the situation. Be safe.